In this video, you're gonna learn everything you need to know about extension tubes for macro photography. How do they work? How many of them do you need to reach your desired magnification? How do they affect the image quality? And where do you buy them the cheapest? I'm gonna answer these questions and a lot more. And I'm also gonna, of course, use this final extension tube setup in my office here to take some macro photos and see what kind of results we get. So extension tubes are this very simple invention to get more magnification with any lens on your camera. So you can take a regular 50 millimeter f 1.8 lens like this one. And if you put some extension tubes behind it, you get a macro lens. And an extension tube is basically just a tube that uh, you attach to your camera on one end and then on the other end you attach the lens or another extension tube. You can stack them as many as you want uh, and the more you have the more magnification you get so the closer you get to your subject. So in theory you could basically make a microscope with enough extension tubes. And you usually buy them in sets of three, like this one. And usually there is one short, this one is 12 millimeter, one a bit longer, this one is 20 millimeter, and one that is the longest, this one is 36 millimeters. And uh, then you can adjust how many you want to have depending on how close you want to get. And why does this work? Well, basically every lens projects an image uh, outwards from the center to the sensor. So if you just uh, increase the distance between the sensor and the lens a bit, you get a bigger version of the image on your sensor. It's pretty simple. And if you back away the lens enough, you get a very good magnification and you get a macro lens. What you lose though is that your lens, which is constructed to be at a certain distance from your sensor, will not longer be able to focus on infinity. When you have some extension tubes on there, you will have a very limited focus range. So basically, if you are shooting an insect with a certain number of extension tubes, and then you want to go on to photograph a horse or something else that's bigger, then you will need to remove extension tubes to be able to photograph that. So that's what you lose, and that is why there is still a market for macro lenses, because with a macro lens you can just turn the focusing ring to focus on different distances. With extension tubes you have a set focus point depending on the lens and how many extension tubes you have, and you cannot move that focusing point unless you remove or add some extension tubes. How many extension tubes do you need then to do macro photography? It depends on your focal length. If you have a focal length of say 50 millimeter, say you're using a prime lens like this one, that is a 50 millimeter lens, then 50 millimeters is the same as five centimeters for you Americans, and five centimeters is uh, this much. Uh, then if you add the same length of extension tubes as your focal length, in this case 50 millimeters, then you will get one time more magnification than your lens already has. And since this is not a macro lens, it's just a regular lens, it has perhaps 0.1 times magnification, uh, I would guess, something like that. Then if you add uh, 5 centimeters of extension tubes, you would get 1.1 times magnification. So it would be slightly better than a regular macro lens when it comes to magnification. And if I then add 5 centimeters more of extension tubes, so it becomes uh, 10 centimeters in total, then I would get uh, 2 times magnification. So then everything that I would uh, photograph with this setup would be twice as big on the sensor as in real life. And this is perfect for macro photography. So if I were to use extension tubes on this lens, uh, the 50 millimeter f1.8 lens from Canon, I would probably go for around 10 centimeters of extension tubes because then I would get to roughly two times magnification and that is perfect for macro photography. 
On the other hand, if I were to have a wide angle lens, maybe a 20 millimeter lens, then I would only need two centimeters of extension tubes to get to one time magnification and four centimeters to get to two times magnification. On the other hand, if I would have a 200 millimeter lens, I would need 20 centimeters of extension tubes to get to one time magnification. So basically that's this much and that is quite a lot. So it's not recommended to use extension tubes on telephoto lenses. I would recommend you to not use them on anything above like 60 millimeter or so, because the resulting lens will be so unwieldy and long and hard to balance. And uh, yeah, it's not a good experience. It's better to use shorter focal length uh, with extension tubes. And of course you can use a zoom lens. For example, a kit lens is perfect because then you usually can go anywhere between like 24 and 70 millimeter or so, and that's perfect. So how is the image quality with extension tubes? Well, the short answer is it is excellent. You will not be able to tell the difference between an image taken with extension tubes and an image taken with the most expensive macro lens in the world. They will both look exactly the same in terms of sharpness and bokeh and everything. Extension tubes do not decrease the image quality in any way because they do not contain any lens elements. So it will be up to the lens you attach them on. And uh, in most cases it will be very, very good. I've used a lot of different lenses on extension tubes over the years and I've never encountered a situation where I would not get excellent image quality. So this is not anything you need to worry about. Of course there could be some lenses that do not perform well when you focus them too closely. There could be some instances of that, but in general you get excellent image quality. So what do you need to think about when buying extension tubes? Well, the first thing you need to think about is that there are two different kinds. There are the ones with electrical contacts, uh, like these ones. You can easily notice that by looking at this. These are the electrical contacts. And then there are other extension tubes without electrical contacts. And uh, which ones you want depends on what you lens you're gonna use on them. If you have an electrical lens with electrical aperture, like most modern lenses, then you want extension tubes with uh, electrical contacts, because otherwise you will not be able to change the aperture uh, on your lens, <laughs> which is kind of a problem. Uh, if you have an older manual lens uh, that is not electric, then you don't need electrical contacts at all. Then you can just use cheaper extension tubes that do not have electrical contacts. And if you were to have some non-electrical extension tubes and an electrical aperture lens, you can still use it. But then you need to set the aperture in advance on your camera. Uh, set it to like f8 or something that's good for macro photography and then you turn off the camera and hopefully the lens will be stuck at that aperture and then you can put it on the non-electric extension tubes and shoot at f8 but that is very cumbersome of course and not anything i would recommend so where should you buy your extension tubes I buy all of mine directly from China, usually on like AliExpress or eBay, because then you will find very cheap ones. You can usually get a kit for uh, under $10, including shipping, uh, which is practically free. Of course, the quality is often not that great. Uh, so what I usually do is I order like three different sets of extension tubes with different brands or different uh, looks. And then usually one of these three will be good quality and the other ones I can just throw away or not use as often. And in general you kind of get what you pay for. If you buy extension tubes at your local retailer for a lot more money, usually they can cost like up to $100, usually you get better quality. But I'm not sure that the better quality is always worth paying 10 times as much. Uh, this is a decision you need to make for yourself. There is one common quite big problem with extension tubes in macro photography though that I need to warn you about. But there is also a pretty simple solution so uh, you don't need to worry that much about this. You just need to know about it. 
the thing is that extension tubes are very often quite shiny on the inside. And you can inspect your setup by just shining a flashlight into the lens with the extension tubes on and look if you see a lot of reflections. If you do see this, this is a problem because when you're doing macro photography, usually you use a strong flash or you have strong light of some kind. And if you have internal reflections in your extension tubes, then that will mean that you get a loss of contrast and your photos can have some highlights in them or like bright spots or even like a milky look to them. And that is not desirable and can be very frustrating. The solution I usually do is I simply apply some black adhesive velvet. This is the kind of velvet I use. Uh, it's a sheet that I bought at a hardware store. Um, it's basically black velvet on one side and then it's like uh, adhesive on the other side. Uh, so you can just cut uh, whatever width you need. And then you can, as I have done on this extension tube here, um, attach it. On the inside, not sure if you can see, on the inside here uh, I have attached uh, black velvet around so that it will eliminate any glare and this solves this problem perfectly. You just need to know about this problem and the solution in case you get low contrast in your macro photos. So let's take some photos with the long, long <laughs> extension tube here. Uh, this is around 50 centimeters of extension, half a meter. So that means that with a 50 millimeter lens, it is around 10 times magnification. And 10 times magnification means that anything you photograph will be 10 times as big on the sensor as it is in real life. And yeah, it checks out. Look at this. <laughs> My sensor is... Uh, full frame one, so it's 36 millimeters wide. So that means that whatever I photograph that is 3.6 millimeters wide will cover the whole frame. And it looks like that is kind of correct here. You might be thinking, how can you be using a Canon lens on a Sony camera? That is simply because I wanted to get a really long extension. So I combined my Canon extension tubes and my Sony extension tubes and I put a Canon to Sony adapter in the middle there. That is why I have a Canon lens at the end. But as you can see, the image quality is quite good. With 10 times magnification, you of course get quite severe uh, diffraction and uh, very short depth of field. But that is to be expected with any macro lens. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you like macro photography. See you soon again.